Hello. Welcome back. And, as always, I hope you're doing well. Right. As some of you know, last night was Thursday. I don't know when I'm going to actually upload this. Me and my mate, Alice Played Reactions, went to the cinema last night, down to the Cineworld IMAX in Basildon, to see... Roger Waters, This Is Not A Drill concert, live from Prague, and it was broadcasted to cinemas all over the place. And I wanted to tell you my thoughts, because when I got home, I was on a bit of a buzz, I was on a bit of a high, so I straight away went onto the internet and Googled Roger Waters, and constantly I'm seeing Roger Waters as upset people, and Roger Waters is anti-Semitic, and he's come out in a Nazi outfit, and I'm like, whoa, 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 where's all this hate coming from? I didn't get any of that. I went there, it blew my mind, I learnt a few things as well. It was more than just a show, but the show was phenomenal. The sound in the cinema was amazing. Surround sounds, you had it, you know what Pink Floyd's like if you're a fan. I know it's Roger Waters, but let's be honest, he's a, he is kind of Pink Floyd, isn't he? You know, that's a conversation for another day. I actually have been thinking about doing a video of which one is pink. Another video for another day. Anyway, I digress. So, the show. We got our seats, it was a little bit dark in there. Obviously, Roger Water comes on. The show's going to start in 10 minutes, and then he comes on with his. I think everyone who knows about the show now, uh, if you like his music with Pink Floyd, but you don't like Roger's politics, he tells you to fuck off, basically. And it got us all sort of like laughing. There was a lot of Pink Floyd fans in there. I see a lot of Pink Floyd t-shirts. I have my... His Mortal Remains t-shirt on. And my mate Alice had a really nice Pink Floyd t-shirt on as well. Anyway, again, I digress. The show is predominantly Pink Floyd songs. There's one from Radio Chaos. There's a couple from Is This The Life We Really Want, the 2017 album, and a new track, The Bar. But we'll get to that. So it starts off with Comfortably Numb 2022. Now, how I miss this, I don't know. There's a video, and I'm going to link it in the description down below. It's the official video to it, and it was played on this. It's like a big cross. The screens is incredible. I'll put some little video there that I've grabbed off the internet. Now, I was going to film some, and I did film a little bit, but to be honest with you, I was so involved in the show, I kind of didn't care about that. I knew there'd be some on the internet. Like I said, most people sit there doing this with their phones, and they're missing it all. Me and me mate had the experience, and it, we was clapping, we was applauding, we was singing. It was terrific. But this version of Comfortably Numb really suits... 2023 i know it's released last year but it really suits the time it's a calmer slower version there's no major lead some beautiful vocals i really like this version normally i'm a bit of a stickler for versions oh it ain't like the original it's got to be the original well i don't know about this i quite liked it i'm not saying it's better let's be honest the the comfortably numb from pink floyd the wall is just amazing song. But this was beautiful in a dystopian kind of way. It was bloody marvellous. Then obviously it goes into the happiest days of our lives, another Brick in the Wall part two and three. Then the powers that be from Radio Chaos. And then there's some songs from Amused to Death. Because I haven't listened to Amused to Death for yonks. But I'll tell you what, Roger, you probably ain't going to see this video, obviously you're not, but You've made me want to dig back into your catalogue. You know, the pros and cons of hitchhiking, amused to death, radio chaos. Is this the life we really want? Honestly, guys, if you've got tickets to go and see the show, and that's if politicians don't try and stop it, which is ludicrous if you ask me, but we'll get to that. During the songs, The Powers That Be, it has all these names up there, George Floyd and Frank, and there was a woman, I'd not even heard of this woman, Shireen abdul Akleh. I'd never even heard of her before, but apparently she was a journalist for Al Jazeera. She'd done it for 20 years, and she was she was murdered. She was murdered in the uh, West Bank. I didn't know anything about her, so when I got home, I had a little look, and it's shocking, really. And I do wonder... I do wonder if that's the reason why they're trying to shut this show down, because it makes you think. You know, it shows you all the politicians, you know, Bush, Reagan, Trump... And it actually says war criminals. It tells you how many people that have died under their reign, etc., etc. I try not to get political on here. Because I know there's people from the left. There's people from the right. There's people in the centre. 
But this isn't about that. This isn't about this. This is a, this is about humanity, and that's what I got from it. People say he's hate-filled, he's anti-Semitic. I don't think he is. He wants peace. He calls everyone his brothers and sisters. Doesn't care your ethnicity, your religion, anything like that. He doesn't care. We're all living on this planet that he cares about, and he's got a strong stance on nuclear war, obviously. And you know how the politicians are with peace lovers. He done a minute silence for Anne Frank and Shireen abdul Akleh. It was quite touching, to be honest with you. Then he does this song, The Bar. I think that's how it goes. He, he definitely done a minute silence or a few 30-second silence, although someone was making a bit of a racket, but with a weird sound. Don't know what it was. Then he done this song, The Bar, and I hope he releases it as a single or on a forthcoming album because it was wonderful. And it felt like we was all together. All together. I mean... The graphics, whoever does the graphics, I mean, I've always thought that about Pink Floyd anyway, but I know this is Roger Waters, but it's amazing. Then it went into Have a Cigar, Wish You Was Here, from obviously Wish You Was Here, Shine On Your Crazy Diamonds, and Sheep. And that was bloody brilliant. Sheep from the album Animals, very dystopian album. And I've just recently got the uh, 2018 remix on vinyl. Bloody brilliant. And it's got, this massive sheep flying around in there, as well as all these sheep all over the big screens. And they've got these sheeps doing karate moves. It's bloody, it's stunning to watch. Uh, and that's the end of part one. And I think this is where the controversy lies. After the break, they have a little 20 minute intermission, which was nice. So we go and get a quick drink and stuff. He comes in doing stuff from the wall. In the flesh. Now... Anyone who knows Pink Floyd, anyone who knows Roger Waters, anyone who's seen the film, The Wall, they know in the flesh. He's a fascist, you know, with the two hammers and the and all of that lot. It's part of the story. But in the newspapers, when I got home, they were saying he's wearing Nazi outfits. It isn't a swastika on his arm. It's the two hammers. It's like West Ham, actually. Oy, oy. But it's nothing to do with that. He's not anti-Semitic. He's not anti-anything. He's anti-establishment. He's anti-war. Well, that's what I got from it anyway. And I've listened to Roger Waters' interviews. I know some people go, he should just shh and stick to the music. John Lennon didn't. A lot of people don't. Some do. And just carry on just getting the money and living their lives and doing whatever celebrities do. We're not getting to that. This is not that man. I honestly think he's got compassion and humanity. And I was literally blown away. Then they went into Run Like Hell. Deja Vu from Is This The Life We Really Want. Money. And then it went into a big Dark Side of the Moon medley. And then they went into one from The Final Cut. Two Sons in the Sunset. And the graphics of that was fantastic. About them dropping a bomb and a guy trying to get home. And getting obliterated by the uh, nuclear blast. And his wife too. And then it goes to the reprise of the bar. Again. And then it ends up with Outside the Wall. But I learned a lot just by reading. Because you can't help yourself. If you're watching the show and these big screens. He talked about Eisenhower's speech about the... The military industrial complex. I didn't know about that speech. I don't know why. Maybe I should have done. But I, have, I listened to it a couple of times today. Very interesting. He also brought up Aldous Huxley, um, The Brave New World, and obviously he brought up George Orwell, Animal Farm, in 1984. Brilliant books. But yeah, I don't know what all the fuss is about, to be honest with you. And why they're trying to counsel him is totally beyond me, to be honest. I think the show was phenomenal. I'm really glad I went. I know my, we both come out on a real good buzz. We was really stoked to go and see it. Cinewell done a great job. The sound in there was phenomenal. Me, personally, I would have liked to have had a little bit louder, but hey-ho, it is what it is. I think there's a few shows in England the over the next month. If you've got a ticket, you're going to have a blast. You're going to have a blast. But I don't know why all the hate. Maybe you'll be able to tell me in the comments down below. I can't quite figure it out myself. I didn't come away feeling hate at all. I come away feeling like I need to look into that a little bit more. And maybe that's the worry. Maybe that is what they don't want, the powers that be. Anyway, I had a great time. And thank you very much, Roger Waters. When you do bring out a new album, I will be getting one.
and I am starting to listen to Roger Waters again. I haven't done much Floyd late listening to lately, and I need to. I do need to. So much good stuff in there, let's be honest, across all genres. But yeah, that's my video, guys. Are you going to see the Roger Waters show? Did you go to the cinema last night and watch it? What was your thoughts? Did you come away feeling all angry with Roger? I didn't. I thought it was fantastic. And all that nonsense. Like I said, I was completely stunned when I got home. I thought I'd go on, have a little look, and literally Metro, all independent, all these newspapers. Oh, the fans was outraged. I didn't see anyone walk out. There was none of that outrage. I don't get it. I do not get it. Maybe you might be out to enlighten me in the comments down below. Right, guys, with that, I'm going to love you and leave you. It's a little bit of a ramble, I know. It weren't really well structured, but I just wanted to... I don't get the outrage. Let him just do his thing. He's an artist. I know they don't like, like I said, John Lennon, they don't like them spreading peace and love because we're in the year 2023. You know, we should be all like the Jetsons now, flying around on hoverboards, living peaceful lives instead of these constant bloody wars. Constant wars. I'm rambling. And I don't know much about politics, so maybe I should keep me gob shut. But I was a little bit disappointed. That brought me on a bit of a Debbie Downer when I got home. I was on a right buzz. We're thinking that was amazing. I really enjoyed the Floyd versions that he'd done. The band were phenomenal. The backing singers was amazing. And for an older guy, he sounded terrific. He sounded terrific. Anyway, with that, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Have yourselves a terrific weekend. And I'll be back with another ramble real soon. You take care, people.